Welcome to the Market Mystics Podcast. I'm Joshua. I'm Kim. Let's dive in. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Market Mystics. We are here with Kim, and I know we've already celebrated it. However, today, the day we are actually recording this, is both Rosh Hashanah and Kim's birthday. So I know we've celebrated it in a previous episode, but today's the day we're actually recording it, and it is that day. So happy birthday, Kim. Thanks, Thanks Josh. for being alive. Thanks. I'm glad to be alive. <laughs> hey, I have a question for you. Let's hear it. Uh, this question was posed to me yesterday, and it was interesting, the responses from the people who are around me. Um, do you have any like wishes that you would have lived in a different era mm. or are you happy with the, I guess, generation that you're in, but like the time frame in which you grew up and where you are yeah. now? Um, well, I'm super grateful that I grew up in the era of indoor plumbing and electricity. <laughs> <laughs> super pumped about that. Um, Honestly, like there's, I think sometimes it's easy to idolize other generations um, just because you're living in the, like, you can see the good parts of it and not just the day to day parts. Um, I'm really happy with the generation that I live in. So I think I would just say I'm happy where I am. If I had to pick another generation, I think I would pick. Like maybe like somewhere in the late seventies to mid nineties to be an adult. Um hmm. because it's like post war, the economy's doing pretty good. Um and I feel like it is before like technology is starting to come, uh but it's before I feel like some things kind of went pretty far. Mm -hmm. Inflation's in a fairly decent spot. Things are relatively affordable. Um, like, so to me, like when I'm thinking about it, like if I had to pick somewhere else, probably like that early nineties, mid eighties point to be like an adult would be a pretty great spot to like, to be in. Um, but also I am totally just happy with where I'm at. It's a good answer. That's what a good was your answer. answer? My answer is no, I would not choose to have been born in a different time. Yeah. Nope. Totally happy with it. Like I'm happy with the, like I'm an older millennial than you are. We're mm -hmm. both millennials, but I'm very much on the beginning side. You're kind of right in the middle. Yeah. And for me, my childhood was so much in the 90s and it was still like play outside. I rode my bike all over town. Like it was my mode of transportation yeah. and, you know, play with the neighborhood kids. Um, there was technology and I was, I guess, involved in that. Like I was pretty exposed to that. Um, I didn't love the internet speeds and the, you know, the iconic sound that no one will forget if they ever heard it right. of that modem dialing up. Um, but then to see all of the advancement and kind of just, I'm here for it. I don't know. Mm. I, I like having both parts of that because it feels like good balance to me. Yeah. I don't think it's wrong to have like, like to have been born in a different time. I just really kind of, I'm very satisfied with yeah. when I was born. I think that's a good place to be. Mm -hmm. um, well, to keep with our normal tradition, we have a question from a kid today. Um, and today's question comes from Mr. Zeke. Um, and his question is, um, will we see God in heaven? Or just Jesus? This is a really good question. Um, I think you absolutely can see God in heaven. 
Um, but I'm also of the opinion that we can see God in things even here on earth. Um, and it may not look like the man that is God, like normal body and head and face and all of those things. But I think right. that his essence is in everything. And I think if you look for him, you'll see him and things everywhere. Um, and I know that's kind of taking it back to earth. But I also know that, you know, in the Bible, it talks about the throne room and Isaiah even went and had an experience where he entered the throne room mm -hmm. and was before God, the creator, um, with all of the angels lining the room and, you know, singing, holy, holy, holy. And there's the smoke that filled the temple and the train was so long and like really cool story in there with that. And so I would say, yes, absolutely. I think you'll see him in heaven, but I also think you can see him here and now. Yeah. No, I think that's that's a great answer. My answer was going to just be, yeah, I think you'll be able to. Uh, but I love the addition of, but what's stopping you from seeing or experiencing him more and more every day now? Um, but also to keep with my tradition, I asked Chat GPT this question because <laughs> um, I was really curious. Um, and it says, uh, many Christians believe that those who go to heaven will see God face to face. And this idea is reflected in verses like 1 Corinthians 13, 12, which says, now we only see in reflection, uh, but soon we will see face to face. Uh, Revelation 22, 4, they will see his face and his name will be on his forehead. Um, and so, um, but I felt like some of those were like, maybe talking about Jesus. Um, and so I just think like, yes, but then there's also like, this is like Jesus talking on the Sermon on the Mountain. He said, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. And so I hmm. feel like, yeah, there's, you have a promise to see God. And I think you will, um, you will see God in, um, in the afterlife. Uh, and I think that that's, um, something to look forward to. But I also know the Bible describes him as an infinite, invisible being. And so he might not quite look like what you expect him to look like. That's true. He might show himself to you in a way that you expect him to look like. Um, but he might not look in his truest form in the way you expect him to. I also thought this was interesting. Chat GPT gave like, the answers for other religions as well. And in Judaism, it says that traditional Jewish thought tends to focus more on closeness and understanding God's will in the afterlife rather than directly seeing him because it is con he is considered to be beyond physical form. And so the idea of mm -hmm. seeing him in general in a form is not emphasized in Judaism. I like that because I also had this thought that, like, what's to say that our five senses will be the same in yeah. heaven as they are and as we know them now? Yeah, I hope and they're so not. What if, <laughs> right. So what if it isn't actually like, like seeing with your eyes, but what if it is experiencing or feeling or something that we can't even fathom at this point because it's beyond how we like are in the earth. Yeah. But what if you get to experience him in like a completely new way? I feel like that would be pretty amazing too. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that thought. Cool. Mm. Good question, Zeke. We appreciate it. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, to just continue the conversation for a few minutes, um, we are going to talk about some life events that Josh had this week. Uh, so this week I was in a car accident, which could have been very serious uh, and thankfully was not very serious. Um, well, very serious as far as like injuries go. Um, yeah. But it very easily could have been. Um, but we were talking about like emotions and um, just the way people deal with different situations 
um, because the incident was caused by a driver who was mad at another driver. And so it's raging. Yeah. So we were talking about just this concept of like, like, man, like what, what happens in you when something takes over and you make a decision that you probably wouldn't normally make that endangers other people? Like, what is that? What happens? What's going on? Um, what happens when you turn to rage? Uh, and so I was just curious, like, from your perspective, have you ever experienced that type of like blind fury or, um, like, have you, have you experienced that in life? What's that been like? What, um, what, you know, you don't have to give details, but like, what got you to the point of that? No, uh, I will say this. I grew up with one parent who stayed cool as a cucumber and one parent who flew off the handle often. And I feel like I definitely learned that. And so I've absolutely had those moments of like blind rage. Fortunately, not for years, years. Um, But I came to kind of learn that. I mean, I would say now, as I've learned more about mm, energy and frequency and kind of how that flows and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think what it is for me, it was like this huge buildup of energy. So maybe it's a frustration or it's an anger or even it is just being upset with a situation like, like something is not right. And so there's this energy that comes from that. That doesn't feel great. Mm -hmm. And then there's such a buildup that it feels like there has to be a way to let it out. And so it is like you just let it loose and the things hit the fan, right? Yeah. And I will also say I've never experienced it where letting it out like that feels good. Mm. It's an outlet and the energy yeah. gets dispelled, but it doesn't leave anyone you or whoever might be in the wake of it, it doesn't leave anyone feeling well. Like it's not good energy. Yeah. It's not life giving energy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think this happened so much with people. Um, and it happened with me and it was because I didn't know what to do with that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to not let it erupt and deal with the energy and let it dispel in a more peaceful way. I've since kind of learned how to govern that. I don't know that I could teach a lesson on it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I, but there, I mean, there comes a point where it's like, this isn't serving anyone. This is, tearing everybody down. It is tearing me down. It is tearing people, whoever is around me down. And it is, uh, it is tearing down even my relationship with the Lord, because it is very much like, I know I'm not supposed to behave that way. I know this isn't me. I know those things. And, um, yeah, that's kind of what I think that I also think some of what has helped me kind of learn through that and get some of that under wraps. And this is not me saying I'm holier than thou or anything, but there's a fruit of the spirit and it's called self-control. Mm -hmm. And there is something about walking with the Lord, like being shoulder to shoulder and being in that relationship that kind of, I mean, it bears that fruit. And I, I don't know, what do you think about all of that? Have you experienced any of that? Yeah, I definitely think when I was younger, I was, um, I can relate to that more. Um, I don't feel like I have felt it for quite a while. Um, but 
I do agree. I think it's just like you get this energy build up and it's got to go somewhere. And at some point, that's how it expresses itself. Um, and so, you know, what surprised me in this situation was like in the accident, like I was fairly calm, like, and I know that there was some shock and my body was processing everything that just happened. Um, but I found myself like, instead of thinking, oh my gosh, I can't believe that person did that. Like, that's crazy. I found myself thinking like, I wonder what happened to him this morning before that happened. Like I was thinking the thought beyond the thought. Um, and Mm. I was like, that's really like, that's interesting because, um, I don't know that I could have been in that place before. Um, Mm. but that was where I was. And I was surprised a little bit at my thoughts and I was surprised, um, by just the whole situation really. And it really just made me feel like, well, yeah, like I have changed. I am a little bit different person and that does feel good to like, to be able to go through something traumatic and not have it totally destroy everything. I mean, it was still challenging. There's still things that have to be worked out because of it. There's still a mess of a process. Um, that is frustrating and annoying to go through, but I don't find it like so mad. Like I can't contain it. And I don't really feel like any like utter aggression towards the other drivers or like, I mean, I think it was a really poor decision and, um, it's, it's, uh, unfortunate situation but like it'll be okay like i'll find another car this situation will move on i'm extremely grateful that i'm not dead (laughs) like there's so many benefits to it or there's so many things that i can view as a plus to it that i don't have to focus on the negative aspects of it um, and so that like, I would think I was a little bit surprised when I found myself in that place. And I think it's a good thing. Like I was, yeah. I was grateful to be in that place. Yeah. So if you, like you said, you thought like, I wonder what happened to this person this morning. Like what happened to get them to this point? Mm. Um, did you dig into that much? Like, no, not like too much because I really, I didn't really have very much interactions with the other drivers. Like, um, because it was kind of a heated thing between some of the drivers, um, everyone pre- like the, they pretty much had everyone sitting in their cars while they work, worked it out from the police side. And so like, I didn't really engage with them too much, but I just had the thought like, Man, to get that upset while driving must have meant something happened, um, like to add to it. Like, did because surely that this whatever happened didn't just tip you over, like, there was something beyond that. Um, but also, I don't know, maybe it was, maybe that person just has a short fuse. Like, I don't know. I wonder, like, I it, I tend to see people who maybe mm, kind of reside at like 95% capacity in regard to what could tip them over the edge or not mm. in this regard. And I feel like there was a, I'm sure at some point in my life I was like that. But what do you think is something that people can do to bring that down so that if, if somebody cuts you off in traffic or whatever, I'm making up whatever scenario, but if someone cuts you off in traffic, can you let it roll off your back or is it going to just be, be that proverbial straw that broke the camel's back? Right. Yeah. So I think the thing that has helped me the most is, um, is implementing mindfulness. Um, you can call it meditation, you can call it whatever you want, but like 
um, being in a place where you are observing your thoughts and you you are understanding that your thoughts aren't always you. Um, mm-hmm. If you can learn to get to that place, then when you have the thought, the angry thought towards the other driver, you can be like, oh, that was interesting. Instead of like owning it. Um, and maybe like, I'll be honest, I think there are times when anger is justified and needed. I don't think anger is bad. I think um, maybe wrongly directed anger, um, but just being angry at a person or a situation, I don't think is a wrong thing. Um, but yeah, properly directed. So maybe someone recklessly cuts you off and you get angry at them. Um, well, do you pursue them and let them know how upset you were? Or do you just like make a decision to like understand it and process it and like help teach other people how to make better driving decisions like you know what do you do with that energy i'm not saying there's yeah. a, like i don't know what the right or wrong thing to do with that energy is um but there is a way to let that energy out that isn't destructive yeah i think you're right and i think when we talk about um, anger and even to the point of rage which i think is like an extreme form of anger mm. um I have to think that if if we're able to get to that point, there's got to be something useful we can do with it yeah. that isn't annihilation. Right. Um, and it makes me wonder, like, what is the process of figuring out how to use that energy or how to redirect that energy? Mm. You know what I mean? And I think just like you said, I think anger is not bad. Like it is a very real emotion that most people feel throughout their lifetime at some point or another. Um, I just tend to think that sometimes other emotions are like shamed a bit. Mm -hmm. And so the acceptable emotion to display um, sometimes is learned is, is only anger. And so then some emotions that may not even be anger like come out as anger because that's been accepted as something okay to feel. Yeah. Um, I think one of the best things you can do as well is practice, um, practice doing something with the energy when it's not such a charged situation. Um, like maybe it's still an uncomfortable in a, a situation that's charged enough to, let you do it but maybe not in one that takes you all the way to rage like what about just irritation can you start to learn to let irritation can you start to learn to alchemize irritation to something different before it's full-blown rage yeah i think that's really good you know what else i was thinking is um and we talk about this all the time uh taking responsibility for how you are feeling mm. in a situation um because i think sometimes we tend to say oh they made me xyz right yeah and i would argue that no you allowed you xyz yeah because you were triggered or put in a situation that made you feel a certain way yeah And I think maybe a little bit of like owning how you feel and how how you react um, might really help to be able to manage that energy too, because you see it as your own and not as something that somebody has put on you and made you do. Yeah. You know? For sure. For sure. Yeah. I think personal responsibility, especially when it comes to a situation like this is very important. Yeah. Mm. I do wonder what the other people who are involved in this accident, like how they felt afterwards. Like, I wonder, is there like remorse? Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I behaved like that. Or if it is like, well, they made me do it. Obviously this wasn't my fault. Yeah. Or if it was just, 
purely justification. Like I did what I did and I would do it again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I have I, to wonder. Yeah. I'm super curious. I mean, there was uh, like four different people involved. Um, and I would imagine there might be all of those. Like <laughs> they might all exist there. I don't know. It's interesting. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. I also wonder if probably this is probably silly to wonder i wonder if like initial reaction to it turning into like a real incident um involving other people if it like immediately snapped them out of some of that yeah or if it is a process to come down from that yeah or if if people will come down from that you know it's a great question i don't know yeah. I don't know. I think humans are really interesting in these kinds of questions. Fascinate yes. me. Yeah, I'm not it's... happy that it happened in any way, but I do wonder just kind of mindsets and points of view. And yeah. I, I have a hope. I have this like deep, deep hope that even when people don't display the best behavior, that deep down inside of them, they still will see the humanity and the other people involved. You know, yeah. like, I think that is one of those things I hope for every yeah. situation always. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, good stuff. Thank you for your thoughts. Thanks for helping process my crazy week. Um, and yeah, we will... Um, I just encourage people to um, to own your thoughts and to start practicing alchemizing situations before you get there. Because uh, if you can do that, I think there's pretty good hope for humanity. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, we'll see you next time. See you guys. Hey, thanks for listening. Keep up with us along this journey by liking, subscribing, and becoming a member through YouTube. Members get exclusive access to bonus content with our guests, deeper dives into topics, and a look into other projects. We're glad to have you here. See you next time.